हेलो एवरीवन जय हिंद टू ऑल वेलकम इन डिजिटल स्टूडियो ऑफ अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट ऑफ ऑटोमेटा मेनली दिस सब्जेक्ट इज नोन एज थ्योरी ऑफ कंप्यूटेशन आर थ्योरी ऑफ ऑटोमेटा एंड फॉर्मल लैंग्वेज दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द थ्योरी ऑफ ऑटोमेटा एंड फॉर्मल लैंग्वेज in the language we have to discuss about how the given string is processed by using machine theory of automata and formal language also known as theory of computation is a theoretical branch of computer science tuffle mainly deals with the logic of computation with respect to simple machine refers to as automata टफल इज अब्सटेक्ट मॉडल ऑफ डिजिटल कंप्यूटर आर ऑब्सटेक्ट मॉडल ऑफ मशीन विच इज यूज टू प्रोसेस द गिवेन लैंग्वेज इन अ स्पेसिफाइड मैनर टफल इज अ मैथमेटिकल मॉडल नेक्स्ट द ऑटोमेटा ओरिजिनेटेड फ्रॉम द वर्ड ऑटोमेटॉन क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू ऑटोमेशन that means how a machine is process the given language is related in the terms of theory of computation this is the application of theory of automata and formal language the first application is tuffle are used in artificial intelligence embedded system but the most widely used application is in compiler construction they check whether the language written in correct or not that means we have to given statement or information and we want to check the language is syntactically correct or not then we have to use automata by using theory of automata and formal language we have also check the correct meaning of word and spelling mistake also automata enable scientist to understand how machine compute the function and solve the problem this is the main application area of theory of computation next the main motivation behind developing automata theory was to develop method to describe and analyze the dynamic behavior of discrete system in this system we have to discuss how the automata process or model the given string in a given format this is the fundamentals of theory of automata and formal language in this we have to discuss what is the main concern about the given to analyze the different symbol by using the theory of computation and formal language in this we first consider a point which is called symbol symbol means any alphabet that means any character which is used in a theory of computation we can use any symbols like a b c d x y z r any special character which is also called the processing of the symbols by using theory of automata and formal language here the example of this symbol is a b c 1 2 etc this may be any alphabet letter or picture which is used in processing the strings next one is alphabet and this is denoted by a term or a symbol sigma alphabet are set of symbol which are always finite that means this is taken as a input symbol and this is always finite always finite means we have to take in limited number of input symbol which may be 2 3 4 5 etc but the symbol must be a countable next one is sigma and sigma equal to a comma b this is also a set of input which is taken as a input sigma this is the alphabet set sigma which is denoted the input characters now the next one is a string a string is 
a finite sequence of symbol from some alphabet a string generally denoted as w that means a string is a finite sequence of input symbols we have to given sigma h a comma b then we have to construct a string w1 a we have also construct a string w2 b we have to also construct a string w3 a b a b or a string w4 is double a double b double b we have to construct another more another more string like w5 equal to b b a a a like this that means the sequence of a and b is called a string because uh, we have take uh, input as a and b so we have to construct a string by using a and b only if we take as a sigma equal to 0 comma 1 then we construct different string like w1 equal to 0 1 0 0 this is a string or w2 equal to triple 0 triple 1 0 etc that means if we use input symbol 0 and 1 then we construct a string by using 0 and 1 or if we use input as a and b then we have to construct a string by using uh, by uh, using a and b okay now the next topic is uh, next point is length length means number of symbols in the string is called length this is also defined as length is the number of symbol in the given string. The length of a string w is denoted by mod of w. This is a symbol which is used to denote the length of the w. If here w equal to a, then we have to calculate w mod of w1 equal to 1. w2 is equal to also only b, then the mod of w2 is 1 and w3 is a b a b the number of symbol is 4 so the mod of w3 is 4 and w4 equal to a b a b a b there are six symbols so the mod of w4 is 6 that means number of symbols in a given string is called length of the string and it is denoted by mod of the given string the next point is concatenation of the given string. Concatenation means when we have two string W and V are given, W is this and V is this, we are want to find W dot V, then this is called concatenation. In this operation, we have to append the symbol of W before the symbol of V. That means the string which comes before our symbols are written initially after that the symbol uh, the symbol are the string which comes after those symbol are written after the first string that means the concatenation of, concatenation of two string w and v is the string obtained by appending the symbol of v to the right end of w and the next one is reverse reverse means we have to reverse the given given string and it is denoted by w power r if we have to w equal to if we have given string w equal to a1 a2 a3 a4 then we want to find reverse of w w power r equal to a4 a2 sorry a3 a2 and a1 that means reversing the sequence of string is called reverse of the given string here we have take w as a input string then the reverse of w is written as w power r an comes first position then an minus 1 then an minus 2 then an minus 3 dot 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 a3 a2 and a1 this is the reverse of a given string 
Now the next point is empty string is the string with zero occurrence of symbols and represented by as a sigma. If we want to denote a null or a empty string, then we use sigma to denote the null string. For alphabet A comma B with length n, the number of string can be generated to power n. If n is the length of the given string, then the number of string can be generated if to power n. This is the number of string to be generated. Here a symbol is used sigma plus. This is the a positive closure and this is that represent a set of all string except null r, null string. That means this is the set of all string without null. We have to remove null from the given set, then we have to obtain sigma plus. Next one is sigma star. It is also called clean closure and that represent the occurrence of certain alphabet for a given language alphabet for 0 to the infinite number of times in which null string is also included. That means in sigma plus we does not take null, but in case of sigma star we have to include null. We discuss a letter uh, by taking an example. This is a sigma equal to a, we want to find sigma plus, sigma plus equal to a, double a, triple a, four times a, five times a, how many string or how many the number of single you can be concatenating, uh, you taken in the set of sigma plus, but we do not take null. But in case of sigma star, we have to use null also. That means sigma plus does not containing null, but sigma star contain null also. Now, the next topic of automata is language. A language is a set of strings chosen from sigma star. That means we have the set of string and we take a set from sigma star and construct uh, another set, that set is called language in terms of automata. But in daily life, language can be defined as mean of communication, but here we have to define language as a set of string and string is the set of sequence and sequence means that is the sequence uh, set of alphabets and alphabets is the a unit of symbol is called alphabet, which may be 1, which may be 2, or which may be A, B, C, D, etc. Now, we can say a language is subset of sigma star. This is the main point where we have uh, summarized the language in terms of subset of sigma star. Sigma star contains the set of all string and by taking the some string and form uh, another set, that set is called language. We have to uh, write a note, a language can be formed over sigma can be finite or infinite. Finite or infinite means if the number of string to be countable, then the string is said to be finite, otherwise it is infinite. That means uh, we are not able to count the number of string, then the set is called infinite. This is basically called finite or infinite set. But here we always discuss about the finite sequence of symbol. Now, this is the relation between sigma plus and sigma star. Sigma plus equal to sigma star minus null. If we have to remove null from sigma star, then we get sigma plus. This is the relation between sigma plus and sigma star. Here we are, uh, uh, I am going to discuss a uh, uh, extra point. If a uh, string v equal to a b c, yeah, a b b, and a string 
u equal to a b b b and we want to concatenate this string we have to write v dot u equal to a b b dot a 3 times b and we want to find the length of v dot u then we have to find the length of b plus the length of u that means the length of u equal to 4 and the length of v equal to 3 here we have to put 3 plus 4 we get 7 that is the length of string after concatenation okay this is the uh, topic uh, uh, in which we want to find the length of the given string then we have to add individual length and we obtain the length of concatenated string now the next topic is grammar a grammar for english language tells other whether a particular sentence is well formed or not but here we discuss automata in automata grammar means set of rules for a particular sentence that means if we write a string and according to the given rules if string is correct then we said the given language must be processed by the given machine a typical rule of english grammar is a sentence can consist of noun phrase followed by predicate that means each sentence having predicate and noun phrase this is the example of sentence here this is a sentence sentence is converted into noun phrase and predicate then predic noun phrase is converted into article and noun and predicate is also in form of the verbs by using the grammars we have to convert the given sentence in a symbol that means a boy run a boy run a is a article y is noun and run is verb this is a variable this is another variable and this is another variable we have denote these all terms by using the variable and that variable implies are denoted by a terminal by using these concepts we have to translate the given sentence in into the form of sentences in the form of symbols here a grammar g is defined as four tuple this is the four tuple g equal to v t s p where v is called a finite sequence of object called variable variables means a symbol which value may be changed it's called variable like capital a capital b capital c this is used as variable that means v is the set of the variable is also called non terminal this is also called non terminal that means this is written like this a derives b means a is replaced by b if b implies c then b is replaced by c this is the basic fundamentals of the vertex edge t is a set of finite set of object called terminal and it is denote by a small letters a b c such type of symbol is called terminals s belongs to v is a special symbol called start symbol that means we have the given number of productions or symbols and from which symbol we have to start our question or from which points we have to start the derive the given string that decided by s if s is given then we have to start with start symbol s and p is the set of productions production means if we write like this then it is called production a derives b a derives c yeah c derives small a 
such type of notation is called production. Production is also used to derive the given string by replacing the symbols. Now, this is the some basic concepts about the grammar. X implies Y. That means X is replaced by with Y. Okay. W double implies Z. That means W derive Z R. Z is derived from W. If we have to uh, expression W one derive W two W two derive W three W three derive W four dot 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 derives W n. Then we have to write W1 derives Wn or upper steric. This denote the this expression. By using this notation, we have to explain express the given sequence. Here are example. Consider the grammar S A comma B S and P. This is the V capital V. This is the T set of terminal. This is the start symbol, and this is the set of production. Here, the set of production is given. The product. The question is find the language generated by above grammar. That means by using this grammar, we have to find the language. How are which type of language generated by this grammar? This is the steps to show how the language is generated. Here, S is null. We take if S is the start symbol, so we have to start with S. By chance, the in this question, there are one variable, and that is the start symbol, and that variable is also S. So we have to start with any production. If we start with S, there is a string generated, and the string is null. If we start with S derives A S B, and this S is replaced by null, then a string obtained is A B. This is the second string A K A B. Now this S is replaced by S A B. Now this string is obtained. What double A S double B. This S is replaced by null. Then the string is double A double B. Now This S is again replaced by S A S B. Then this string is obtained, and this S is replaced by null. Then the string to be triple A triple B. This sequence, first sequence is null, second A B, third double A double B, and fourth is triple A triple B. This tells the number of A at the starting of the string is equal to the Number of B at the last of a string. This generate the sequence like a power n, b power n, such that n is greater or equal zero. This is the language generated by the given grammar. This is written like this: l equal to a power n, b power n, where n is greater or equal zero. And this is the language generated by the previous grammar. By using this grammar, we have to generate such type of language, and the sequence of language is fixed. Now, we have to discuss the automata or finite automata or finite state machine. An automata is an abstract model of digital computer. Then we have to compare this digital computer with Uh, this automata with the digital computer. According to the given diagram, this is the input file. This is the control unit. This is the storage, and here the output is generated. In uh, the input file is divided into equal size of block called cell, and each cell contain a single symbol. Control unit having number of transition function, internal states. Which tells about the next state and initial state. Here, the storage. It is a temporary storage where we have to perform operations, and here we have to generate desired output. The above figure shows the following features of automata: input, 
control unit control unit having internal state internal state having initial state next state final state transition function storage and output this is the point which is discussed in the given diagram finite automata classified into two categories the first one is deterministic finite automata dfa and second one is non deterministic finite automata that is called ndfa deterministic finite automata are those automata in which a single move is possible that means if we have no option other than a unique move then the automata is called deterministic automata this is the a technical definition of dfa a deterministic finite automata defined by five tuple in which q sigma delta q not and f q is called set of states sigma is the set of input symbols delta is the transition function and q not is the initial state and f is the subset of final state here the initial state must be unique but final state must be may be greater than 1 this is the format of transition function this is the initial state this is input and this is the next state here we have to discuss about the all the points using in the representing the transition function properties of transition function here we have taken state q if input is null then there is no change of state state is as it is here if you take state q a w is the string then first we have to take a as a input like this and then process w after that here w is a string a is the symbol first we have to process w then we have to take a as a input now the representation of dfa dfa is represented by three way first one is by transition function by transition table and by transition graph transition function like this this is all called transition function here the state that means initial state and here the input and here the next state if we start with q not given input 0 and the moving on state q2 such type of representation representation is called transition function here the transition graph transition graph that means state q not input 1 the next state is q not and this is the delta such type of representation is called transition diagram we have to co convert each transition table into a transition graph a transition graph into transition table transition table into transition function a transition function into transition graph each one each mutually convertible to another one here this is the table of the given diagram we have to take present state at first column then next state then state for a equal to 1 and we have to analyze q not input 0 the next state is q not q not input 1 the next state is q2 and so on we have to convert the given table into diagram or the given diagram into table or table into transition function each one is convertible to every one now acceptance of string a string accepted by finite automata m equal to q not sigma delta q not f if delta q not a equal to q for some q belongs to f this is the main point to check a string is accepted or not we process the all symbols or sequence of symbols and we reach on the last state and if state is the final then string is accepted otherwise not accepted a final state is also called accepting state now the second part is non deterministic finite automata this is shortly known as ndfa a uh, ndfa or non deterministic finite automata may have several possible moves that means if more than one moves then the finite automata is called ndfa a uh, ndfa is also a five tuple defense is only in transition function delta otherwise no difference between remaining symbol q is the set of internal state 
sigma is the set of input symbol, q0 is initial state and f is the subset of final state. And here delta is the transition function and the transition of delta is different from uh, DFA. Thank you.